What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 4 of my Battlefield Gothic Armada 2 a modded a Necron campaign. So as we saw last time, we made some pretty decent headway in Chinchar and have unlocked both Skellis and Agrippina. There are four worlds here left in Chinchar that we do have to conquer still, and uh, we're well on our way, but towards the end of the episode, several, I suppose, bad things happened, i.e. the invasions from uh, several enemy forces, i.e. these guys in Setvan and these guys in the Void Worlds, a uh, Chaos and Eldari invasion both of which are probably too big and, and there's no probably about it uh, they are definitely going to be too big for this fleet and this fleet to fight alone so we'll have to figure out what we're going to do here most likely I'm thinking that we might delay this one the scripted invasion cancel this one and then move one of the supporting fleets over from uh, Chinchar now between the episodes I did a couple of things just to avoid wasting time at the beginning of the episode one was to spend our 400 of our uh, money our precious, precious money, which we had none of, on the upgrade of the Dormant Anchorage in Chinchar and the other Dormant Anchorage in Praxa Gulf, because it is the uh, best upgrade that we can get in terms of a bang for your buck. Otherwise, I also named two of our ships with uh, requested names, Overlord Spear and Original Boomer, for both of these uh, set ships. I thought about what I was going to do in terms of naming ships, and uh, originally I thought maybe I wouldn't name cruisers at all, because I use Scythe Harvesters as... Uh, as a sort of sacrificial ship, and therefore they're pretty likely to die. Uh, but maybe I'll just put meme names to Scythe Harvesters and Scythe Ruiners, whereas Sets and, and Reapers and Up uh, get better names. Why does the uh, Ruiner... Uh, more likely to die than the Reaper, while well, it does have less HP and everything else is about even. And I feel like uh, since it has less HP... I mean, I guess it has less HP because it has more weapon. I'll think about it. Maybe we give just the Harvesters, as I said, the meme names, and just uh, make sure to keep the Ruiners back because they're more array. They have a little bit more range, don't they, uh, than the uh, Reapers, who, since they have less range, have the uh, extra hull to compensate. I guess we can make Ruiners and Sets and be in the uh, same fleet. Although, speaking of this fleet that currently has the Sets, this is going to be a long-range fleet. So I suppose we can give them a uh, Canoptic probe. I mean, there are better options. I really like to get a Resurrection Orb, but it's not needed on the uh, on the long-range fleet for sure. And probably the Scarab Storm is also going to be unlikely to be used in long-range. So yeah, Canoptic Probe together with the Transdimensional Thunderbolt. And I believe that's all of you. Now, you have an upgrade, and you have the Scarab Storm for going in close, as well as the Shards of Igrania, which I'm not big on, to be perfectly honest. Uh, what do we give you here? The thing is, with, uh, with upgrades, your best upgrades are upgrades that apply to all ships. So Residual Absorption and Arc Propagator have by far the highest value, and then uh, followed by Phase Shifter, which is slightly more of a niche thing. Uh, if you just want to go into Asteroids, but it is a nice in combination with Residual Absorption, I suppose. And then followed by Shards of Nyadrazatha, and then Shards of uh, Igrania and Nightmare Shroud. Now, all these three upgrades apply to Flagship only, um, but uh, at least the Shards of Nyadrazatha and... Probably, actually, the Nightmare Shroud is better than these two, because I'm thinking, put the Nightmare Shroud on things like uh, Titans, and uh, they'll get the... Uh they'll get a lot of bang for their buck in terms of uh, that being essentially a single ship in a fleet. Whereas Nyadrazatha is okay, but that's only if you get the boarding actions uh, going. If you don't, not going to be as useful, although I am going to put shards of Nyadrazatha on whichever uh, Admiral gets the uh, Nyadrazatha uh, ship. And then, of course, lastly, the uh, Shards of Igrania, which I'm just not a huge fan of in its current state. But uh, uh, Skalgrim did say in the previous in the comments of the previous episode that there were uh, probably going to be some adjustments to the balance of that. But anyway, uh, let's see. What are we gonna get you? Since you have Scarab Storm, you're likely to go into closer range, and you might as well since you have to use your uh, Lightning Strike. I guess we could actually give you the Shards of Nyadrazatha. I'd really prefer to get Residual Absorption, though, because if we do this, we essentially lock ourselves into giving you a Titan. Or one of the or one of the bigger ships, at any rate. Now, the question is, what kind of range does the Nyadrazatha Titan have? Uh, does it need to be up close? Uh, 18,000 units, 13,500 units, and 9,000 units. Okay, so it's, it's best at... Huh. 
So it has these, uh, all these Nyadrazatha focus lenses, which have a low damage but extremely high reload time, especially the two second reload time on the uh, focus lenses uh, that are the uh, close range ones, which is pretty interesting, and that will mean that it's in range of the, uh, of the lightning strike, and I guess we could, in theory, combine shards of Igrania with the shards of Nyadrazatha. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, what are the other options, really? Wait, let me just take a look at the ship again. <laughs> I also want to see what it does here. All right, so we have boarding actions. Uh, what's the range? Oh, but the range is shorter than this, which is kind of annoying. And hmm. But then, and then we'd have to, no, but then we'd be stacking. Yeah, no, that wouldn't work. That plan wouldn't work because a lightning strike wouldn't apply to the same thing as boarding action, would it? Because they're different things. So uh, Nyadrozatha would buff one and then Negranya would buff the other. And then we're, we're being a little bit wasteful there. You know what? I'll think about the, what to do with this fleet uh, in terms of getting its uh, higher level stuff. What kind of ships are going to go in it? I'll consider it, because we also have to have Scourge fleets, uh, Carrier fleets, whatever, and uh, other types of fleets that uh, we'll think about as we unlock Grand Cruisers and such. I don't really care about you guys, I just want to double check whether you guys need any upgrades and know you're good. Uh, let's move you to here. I think I've decided that I am going to cancel this invasion, just because I don't think we can upgrade enough of these guys uh, fast enough to defend against this. And I believe with that we can end this turn and uh, see how well these guys do over here. We have we did lose, lost, uh, lose one ship last episode, which means we do need to be a little bit more careful. You're going to upgrade your fleet a little bit. You are Don't tell me you're going to upgrade your fleet as well. Nope, you're just going to fight this. You're going to take like no losses, I'm willing to bet. <laughs> Minus 30, yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Gam. Great job there, Eldari. Oh, and this last little uh, orky outpost is probably going to get taken over. Oh, unless they build that uh, battle station to protect themselves with. Well, I guess we'll see. I don't really care what's happening in Agrippina, so we are just going to uh, space bar through it to go through it quickly. And there we go. All right, I think we can afford to take one more turn with just money upgrades. So let's see what we have here. Plasmic Condensators, which should give us an extra 10 money. The Forgotten Library. Ancient Vantage gives us another 10 money, but also increases troop regeneration. But 10 money isn't that much. It's better than nothing. So that's 10 money, 10 money, 10 money. How many upgrades do we have here? Five. Let's just double check that there isn't anything super useful here. We know that there's nothing in the Twilight Sisters. You're a core world. Definitely, 100%. Not even going to look at the, the rest. Uh, in fact, we should check whether we have other core worlds available here. Uh, Nephora itself, did we upgrade this one? You're already maxed out, right? Yeah, you are, damn. Uh, any more core world? That's a crown world in Kawat Rift, which I believe is also maxed out at level 3. Damn! Yeah, our upkeep is uh, pretty intense since we can't afford this. And then there's another core world in Hydrocordatus, which we upgraded just now. Okay, nothing else then. We've got all our all our good core and crown worlds upgraded here. What about here? Uh, let's see. Do we have no core or not a single core or crown world here? Uh, na, 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 na. Doesn't look like it, at least of the ones that we have. Maybe there will be one here. Unfinished pylons, dynastic treasure. We do want to get that as soon as possible. Time warp and a tesseract labyrinth for more free battle plans in the minor buried shipyard. I really didn't want to attack this because the Drukari will... Uh, Assault, but you know right after that attack from the Eldari we might as well capitalize. Uh, let's get you guys in Let's build one identifying ship uh, That's a jackal for you kind of a waste of cash What can you do got to get at least one in there and then yeah as I said I'll think about what to do with this for the combination with uh, shards of Igrania if we do uh, we probably should just go ahead and get the arc propagator. I Mean most likely and just thinking about the fact that this will most likely be a close combat uh, fleet, maybe we'll pop cairns into it. Uh, that'll definitely make sense to get the uh, arc propagators in there, just to get uh, several regular cairns. So let's see, the Anubis Titan is going to be its own sort of fleet, which will probably... Yeah, that'll definitely have to have an arc propagator as well. And your range is pretty good, pretty good. And then the short range with the lightning arc. Well, I guess you do need to go close as well, Anubis Titan. So in theory, we could pop you in here as well if we get the arc propagator. Hmm. 
Not too bad of an option, I suppose. We already have a Karen Annihilator. We might get a sister ship for Arcans for the Karen Annihilator so that there's a fleet with two of them. But I'll uh, I'll think about that one. Arcan's gonna obviously switch to the throne of the Silent King. Uh as a Garod is also wait, it's a battleship, not a Titan, eh? Even though the cost is nearly a thousand. Uh it does have a spur, a surgical strike, good troop efficiency, and immune to criticals. Oh lovely. And let's see, Void Beam. Ooh. Can't wait to see how that works. Okay, but you will obviously then not need to have an arc propagator, and that's a long range ability. Huh. So the void beam is really long range, and the uh, lightning arc turrets are quite short range. So that's kind of an interesting little setup for the Azagorod in particular. Hmm. I guess we'll see how that works out. But I take it that it's more focused on the whole long range thing, judging by how much damage this thing outputs, or these things, since there are 18 of them. The Osiris is obviously going to be a uh, a carrier, but it does have the particle whip turrets, so I take it the arc propagators work for them as well. Mm. All right. Well, regardless, I think for this fleet we are going to go arc propagator just because we can go with uh, with Cairns or Anubises or even the double Cairn annihilators. Both of those uh, types of fleets would work here, even though I like residual absorption as well. Uh, and it would probably be needed, but it might as well be something that needs to get up close. So, let's go. Arc Propagator for now. E yes. Alrighty. Decisions made. Uh, let's get the fight over in uh, Jubal and then move on to the other Eldari. Uh, let's see. I would have... Oh, damn. I wanted to bring both sets, but that's not going to happen. Okay, fine. We'll bring two Harvesters as well. You're not hurt anymore. Oh, and we can't bring the Jackal, which I just built. I should have remembered that from last episode, actually. Oh, well. This is fine. I mean, in theory, we could bring a couple of cartouches instead, but wait. It's probably not, uh... You know what? Maybe we should. Uh, let's try with a couple of cartouches instead of another one of the harvesters. Because we already have two harvesters and a set. And let's see, we have assassination, yeah. Well, if it was... I gotta pay attention to this. Next time that there is a uh, high-sec info battle, we'll bring a shroud, try to grab the high-sec info, and then warp out since it has worked out before. Alrighty, Cairn Annihilator looking good as always. Ooh. This is what this is the uh, this is the lovely system with all the uh, ice asteroids in the background. Glorious. Alrighty, so let's set up, let's say, on this side right here. We'll wait until they come towards us, uh, destroy the blob, and then head back into the clouds to repair, as we like to do. The Necron version of the hit and run, although it's uh, obviously a lot more devastating than the Eldari version of the hit and run, which sort of uh, destroys ships one by one, whereas uh, this version destroys fleets or battle groups, uh, the, uh, whatever way you want to call it. All right, so you guys, are, I guess, are sort of acting as long range. Technically, the cartouches aren't really long range, but they're mid range at 13,500. But then again, it sort of matches you, minus the uh, particle with artillery, which is actually wrong, long range, but you guys are more short range, I guess. Or at least by necessity, our can or a Markin just has to tank. Uh, ever since I got the suggestion to name one of the ships uh, Arcan's Fury, I've been confusing Arcan and a Markin. This is all your fault. Uh, let's see. Uh, you guys are all going to go into. You know what? Let's uh, move you forward. Like so. Alrighty, and then you guys are in a good place now. And can we see who all those ships move to? I would love to, let's see. You guys seem to be moving slowly. You must be a slower ship. Aha! That looks like a that looks like a carrier. Let's see if we can't destroy ya. Like so. Oh, are you gonna move through the cloud before we get to ya? Well hopefully not. I guess we'll find out. Go, go, go. And I guess we do need to start launching transdimensional thunderbolts as we like to do. Damn it! My mouse double clicked and then it uh Oh, that's kind of annoying. Oh well. Not much you can do about that one. Uh, Canoptic Probe out here. We know that there is a couple long-range weapons that we have, so we might as well also switch to uh, reload, and we might as well find them out like so. You are not facing the right way. Oh, it's because you uh, went up a little bit too far ahead, which is my fault. I guess. Uh, now, Cartouches, do you guys have a broadside weaponry? Yeah, you do, so you can actually face to the side like so. 
Whereas you do not need to do anything like that. Alrighty, we've identified. Oh, that's a lot of uh, little tiny ships. And man, the AI really likes bringing escorts, doesn't it? Ooh, a decent amount of damage from uh, you guys. It looks like that poor Styx, which is one of the uh, more threatening ships the enemy has, or at least in terms of uh, carrier capacity, is going to go away now. Uh, you, don't you double click again, mouse. Don't you do this to me. Man, I, I, I just replaced my mouse. I don't know. Maybe half a year ago, because the previous one was double clicking. You're not uh, you're not doing it for me anymore, Logitech. Maybe I should buy one of the uh, uh, buy one of the more expensive versions, but maybe one day, whatever. I guess at this point it's uh, it's more expensive to buy the cheaper versions because they just keep uh, they just keep getting that double click issue. I feel like I have some older Logitech mice that I don't know I've had for like. Gotta be at least ten years, maybe more, and they're just fine. So I don't know what's up with the uh, with the newer stuff. Quality decline or something. Alrighty, ooh, hello. Uh, we need to kill you before you actually get out. And we don't need to go forward as of yet, since they have us identified. We could just sit back. Oh, and one of the another one of the reasons I don't want to uh, give proper names to harvesters is because they're cruisers, and therefore they suffer these uh, crits to their decks a lot. And I really don't appreciate that. Alright, cartouches. Alright, everybody switch to dispersion. And we're gonna send one cartouche in first to take all the damage, because we don't really care about it as much. Next cartouche, go. We don't care if the cartouche is that, we can replace them with better stuff. And everybody in. Oh, why, hello! There we go. Uh, let's get at least uh, a Markin to pop his Scarab Swarm and then move forward. Everybody else can move. Ooh, you're starting to take damage, actually. Let's go for Pyramidal Reconstruction. Everybody else uh, move forward. Uh, let's do uh, this Cartouche. You're surprisingly alive over here. Well done. And yeah, there we go. Lots of enemies dying. Uh, let's get that Pyramidal Reconstruction again and move everybody towards this way, and then we'll move back to our cloud afterwards, uh, if we manage to survive. So I have some defensive fighters as well. I do expect the Cartouches to die, but obviously we don't really care about them. Uh, were you guys just smacking into each other a little bit? Nah, that's okay. That is just fine. Well, it's not super fine, but it's, it's fine enough. And yeah, they will have plenty more reinforcements coming in, but uh, we are definitely going to obliterate this battle group. And there's also a, uh, a gas cloud over here, which we could technically move into, minus the fact that we are sort of abandoning this portion of the enemy fleet. You're actually getting close to routing, which I don't really appreciate. Let's destroy this ship, because we need to assassinate it anyway. Uh, then you guys can stop. Uh, Cartouche. You're being boarded, like, a lot. I guess you could try to get out, although I don't uh, foresee it being too effective. You can move back now. And warp out. Let's see if you can manage to pull that one off. Amar can move back. You are going to flee. Let's, just, uh, let's have you jump. Let's have you jump out. And then uh, you guys. How many of you? Okay, wait. Who can't jump? Whose engines are broke? Your engines just broke. Okay. Uh, well, you are gonna jump out because you're badly hurt and you're gonna switch to reactive. Paul, you two might need to move. A mark and turn and go into engramic regeneration, I guess. And we'll need to wait. Or slash move. Okay, wait, another shroud coming in. Oh, that's one of the unfortunate bits about this. You're gonna die. Uh, let's just scuttle you. Yeah, I don't even care. Get another shroud coming in. I guess that's one of the unfortunate bits about bringing the smaller ships, because we get uh, other small ships in reinforcement. I didn't actually need to move you forward. Let's send a uh, lightning orb out there, or transmessional thunderbolt out there. And then you guys keep moving back. Oh, the bombers are going to hit. Or are those troops? Ships, I couldn't even tell. Whoa, 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 chance of troops, chance of troops. Okay, whoa. <laughs> Last second there. In fact, you can transfer some troops as well. You're both at one, you two are both at one, and I think we can switch both of you to reactive hull now. Uh, you switch to reload. Amar can turn off warriors and then switch to reload as well. Uh, you can transfer troops to Amar can. There we go, and you can switch to reload. Let's get back into the stat, force the enemy to approach. Damn, criminal reconstruction, please. And you, pyramid, criminal reconstruction. Oh, did your engine just get destroyed immediately after being healed? That is so annoying. It happens every single time, too. Uh, basically non-stop, and I guess the, one of the reasons it's hap is happening is it's because we're, our engines are uh, facing towards the lances that these guys have. Oh, and again, yeah, so... <laughs> this is why you can't have admirals as cruisers. Just completely useless that way. Alright, you go. And I'm going to move you as well. And then you stop, you stop, you're good where you are. I guess you can move a little bit forward. Where's the set? Uh, yeah, you know what? You can do, take some damage or tank some stuff. 
All right, the rest of these ships should die. They're all going to focus you down now. Uh, 70, 70 seconds-ish until we get our next reconstruction. We really need to get battle cruisers at the very least for the admirals. I guess in theory we could put them into the sets, but like, you don't want to put this, uh, this guy into set because uh, Scarab Swarm is not going to be very useful on a, a long-range ship. And there we go. Now we're all hidden. They'll have to approach with their second set of ships. Wait, we got the Shroud, but we didn't... Ah, oh, it's because we brought two cartouches, but the Shroud is more expensive. Damn. Uh, that's unfortunate. Look at all this debris we created with that little Sally, though. That was nice. If only all of our fleets had residual absorption. All right, let's speed it up while they try to approach us. And yeah, you're recovering nicely, Harvester. I guess we can also identify the enemy ships here. Good. And then you are already in reload. You're recovering troops nicely, so that's okay. There we go. Ooh, hello. An admiral. Or is that two admirals out here? Well, they're going to have a bad day regardless. Uh, let's uh, get another transdimensional thunderbolt. You gotta love that ability, though. And ooh, pieces of debris are still floating up there before oh, they suddenly disappeared. Ah, so there goes a cruiser and there goes an admiral. <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely amazing, and I saw another ship out there, but I don't know exactly where, which is why we're gonna launch an auger probe, or canoptech probe, sorry. Hey, look who it is. Why are you guys sitting back there? Come here, you know where we are. And you know what? While we're, uh, while we're at it, you can recover troops. Mark can switch to troop recovery, you can pyramidal reconstruct, and you can reconstruct. Get those engines back up and running, just... Uh, and then you switch to reload, because you don't need to recover any more troops. Yeah. The more troops we recover like this, uh, the less we'll have to deal with after the uh, battle's over. And are they really just not going to approach us? They're just going to sit in the cloud somewhere? Are you kidding me? What the hell are you doing, AI? I mean, I'll go forward, I guess, so they can damage the shroud if they really feel like it. But they're going <laughs> to... What the hell are you doing, AI? Why are you hiding like that? Ooh, another one of those uh, canoptic... Or not canoptic, uh... Uh, Transmetral Thunderbolts hit and destroyed, yeah. Alright, easy little battle. Granted, a few of the ships were probably hurt by the Eldari, but I doubt it was very many. We saw the only uh, negative 30 reduction to what there, uh, to what was there. And let's see what we managed to do here. Okay, wow, not a not a, a bad amount of renown. And enemy threat level reduction minus 3. Okay, well that's going to be helpful. As we take over the rest of this, I guess we don't really care about this, but Chaos is now at 1, so technically the Eldari are more threatening. So I guess we uh, take Torian next, and then wait, it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ooh, okay, that's a problem. Because so, next, oh damn, no, we'll have to get one of our fleets back here, and I guess we'll cancel this right away. Not gonna be enough battle plans, what can you do? We can't, uh, we can't afford this right now. Cancel invasion. Two battle plans remaining. And even if we delay this to three turns, I fear that, uh, yeah, we don't have enough fleets for it. Unless we luck out with something nice in terms of one of our new admirals. We got four, three, and four. Damn. Not gonna work out then. And I don't, I don't want this uh, Scythe Reaper because of mass recall, if nothing else. Although I suppose we could, in theory, get it. Ah, uh, but you also have Shards of Igrania and mass recall. Okay. Okay, now, some of the most useless stuff. Uh, I really don't like these admirals. <laughs> the Necrons have some amazing upgrades, but we've been having pretty bad luck with the uh, with the RNG this time. I'm sure it's Ultrazin's fault somehow. And what are you doing? And Skellis, oh, you're going to fight this orc unit and you're going to get absolutely destroyed here because of the battle station. Oh, he actually did a decent amount of damage there. Alrighty, let's uh, let's just skip the rest of this because we don't care what's happening in Skellis or Agrippina. And here we go, turn 18. Let's head out to Torian with uh, a Markin. Who do we send back and who do we keep? That's the question. Hmm. I guess against the Eldari, we're gonna get more mileage out of the Canoptec probe, so let's send you. Let's send you here. Do we want to build you another Harvester? You have two Harvesters. I think that'll still max out the fleet capacity. So as long as we don't screw this up horribly, we should still be okay. 
And I think I'm not gonna build anything new because we will probably. Ooh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Crestus? Crestus, definitely build that. Uh, you have. Yeah, another 30. You have a dormant anchorage. Okay, that's all our money yet again. Let's go here and. Oh, I just screwed that up horribly. Uh, wait. Well, these guys are. Oh, damn it. No. <laughs> uh, we're gonna lose the void worlds to this. Because I can't, we can't afford the uh, the minefields now. I did not realize that. We're going to have to revoke a ship. Uh, what about you? I don't actually like what you have. We could revoke... Hmm. Let's see. You have Sekhems. I'm not revoking the Reapers. Uh, we could evo revoke one of these Shrouds. I think that'll be enough. We only need, like, what, 20, uh, 20 money? If we revoke you, we get 37. Yes. I mean, I guess we can revoke the Sekhems, but we sacrifice them anyway. And you already have the one Shroud to sit back with. Oh, although I had a team of two Shrouds here for a reason. Wait, wait, what about the fleet that's coming in? You have... Okay, no, we're not revoking any of that. That's for sure. We could revoke two Jackals, which would give us a total of uh, 20... Oh, wait, yeah, that'll be enough. To revoke Jackal 1. It'll hurt because we're fighting Eldari, but whatever. We can rebuild it next turn. Revoke Jackal 1. 95, and then revoke Jackal 2 from from you perfect ah uh, that was my bad but hey at least it all worked out in the end uh, i guess we could have revoked these cartouches but they're here and you know whatever now we can build this minefield here and then get you moving up there to uh, help defend against that. And then that should be... I mean, it'll still probably be pretty difficult because these guys won't have nearly the type of DPS that the other ships had. Maybe if we build another set here for uh, more long-range power. But until then, let's fight for Torian. What do we have here, by the way? Oh, yes, the 500 resources. We could have actually not done anything to those jackals. I should have looked at that first. <laughs> uh, and could have just uh, sent the jackal to the breakthrough. Oh, maybe, wait, if we have a shroud... Which we do. We can keep the Shroud out. Oh, we don't even have a maxed out fleet. Okay, 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 wait, I kind of like this. Uh, let's go confirm. Let's do this. And it'll be a Black Heart and Dying Sun, so it'll be double Drukari this time around. At least the Drukari shouldn't be all that problematic, because they're fairly weak, as I recall. They route constantly. And they're one of the easiest factions to route. And unlike the orcs, even without destroying all of their decks, they'll just, uh, they're just a little bit cowardly. Uh, let's see, we are going to set up on this side. Where is their battle? Ah, we don't care, it's an Eldari battle station. It's weak, it's weak and pathetic. Uh, let's go right here. And harvesters, I guess, set up like so. Uh, no, other way around, because I want you tanking and I want you surviving, because you're an admiral. And then we'll have the cartouches set up back here. And then we'll wait for them to come forward. All right, uh, group one, group two, everybody in to reload right away. You, Shroud, are going to run silent and you're going to run up alongside the map. Oh, unless they know exactly where you are and they head directly towards you. Which they might do. Hard to say. It looks like... Wait, are these guys heading towards the Shroud? Yeah, they're heading towards the Shroud. Okay, well, damn it. I forgot that the AI can secretly see you. Uh, oh, wait. Although, there's another option. Take one of the cartouches. Get it out. And then, wait, wait, wait. Let's also, uh... Let's do, let's say... Uh, the Eldari are gonna disappear. Hmm... There we go. Now that you're visible, they should all move towards you instead of the shroud, right? Right? Are you guys gonna switch directions? Ignore the shroud, please. I just want to do that breakthrough. Because reasons. Alright, well, these guys aren't hidden. Oh, look, somebody got destroyed over here, it looks like. Really wish I knew what ships these were. So, two here and then three here. I don't know, something like that. And I probably should have been launching our single transmissional Thunderbolt while we were at it. And then let's uh, let's speed it up. Let's see, will they continue ignoring the Shroud? What kind of ships do we have here? Oh, please don't tell me I sent you all to uh, attack escorts. I like the uh, I like the Drukari turrets though. Uh, they're they're fairly bright because they're purple, and you can see them against the uh, 
against the backgrounds. The red ones from the uh, Imperials are a lot harder to see. Although the uh, the green ones are from the uh, Necrons are obviously also fairly effective. And there we go. Shroud, keep going. <laughs> uh, just do that breakthrough. We gotta remember that they will appear on, uh, on with their reinforcements on that side, and that should be okay. They're all trying to get the Shroud, or the uh, Cartouche, rather. We could send more ships as well. Uh, Doom site. oh, did they just identify us? No, oh, well, yes, they did. Thanks, game, thanks. Uh, let's send you guys there. Okie dokie, and now nah, we'll stay and reload at least for now. Cartouche, now that we've been identified, you can move back to where you uh, began here. And we should be able to. Ooh, hello, a torp spread. Uh, let's go for a, a nice star pulse wave now. There we go. I don't know whether that would have hit, but I'd rather not take any chances. After we've seen how effective the uh, Eldari can be in time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, every time. See, the Necrons are particularly bad at this. They don't seem to recognize the tails of their own ships. I remember remarking on this in uh, Vanilla. The AI doesn't seem to realize that collision occurs because of the ship's tails. Oh well. Not a big deal. Ooh, hello, battle plan. We need you. Oh, damn it, but I just sent the shroud elsewhere. Well, that's annoying. We actually had two uses for the shroud this time. And let's keep moving, I guess. Oh, I just realized Shroud can stay here. We can wait until the uh, battle station is uh, ready to go. Otherwise, let's get another transmission. Why are you guys sitting back here? You're not using all of your weapons, are you? I mean, yeah, sure, you're doing some damage, but it's not a great amount. And, ooh, hello, you're going to go into Engramic Regeneration, please. We're going to have the, uh, uh, the Cartouches transfer troops over. Because that's partly what they're here for. And we just gotta make sure we don't... Okay, wait, 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 you... No, 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 we need to, you to move forward, and... No, no, no! Grab that... Ah, oh, damn it, he's gonna take that back. Uh, I moved that in the hopes that they had already wasted all their lightning strikes, but apparently not. You're gonna take back the uh, battle plan. Oh, well. You're gonna have to come back again. You know what we could also then do? While you're running, let's have the, uh, let's have the cartouche steal it back. Wait, who has it now? You don't seem to have it at all. Uh, where'd it go? Oh, and now your deck's gonna get hurt. <laughs> that was not worth it. Alright, let's, uh, let's speed it up. And, okay, it doesn't look like you have it anymore. Well, that was screwy. My bad, I suppose. Not a huge deal, but annoying. Alright, let's switch you. Let's pop you into Pyramidal Recovery, or re Reconstruction. Let's do this. And I guess what we'll need to do is we'll need to... Aha! You can recover some of your troops, and you know what, honestly, Amar can recover some of your troops as well. We are out of Doom Sights, so I guess you're going to launch some Doom Sights out here just to try to identify the enemy. I think no more enemies should be coming, so we can take those now. I know that they had another ship over there. Game. Ship. Alright. Identify, please. There we go. Okay, was that the last ship? Well, let's see if we get fired upon. Uh, squadron retreat, please. Yes, Hi. Let's send you guys forward. I guess you could transfer troops, in theory. Nah, do that. Trout, you gonna cap that? Perfect. And then I guess we could also start using transmental Thunderbolts on you. Do we outrange this thing, or at least does a mark can outrange it? Uh, let's find out. I'd rather not take a lot of damage here as well. Ah, there we go. We can just destroy it with Annihilator Beams. Uh, switch to... you know what? Keep Reload on. And then everybody who has Doom Sights, send them out. And then Transmetral Thunderbolt. Yeah, this is an annoying way to do it, but once again. <laughs> we have a lot to do with very limited fleet capacity and money right now, so I'm being more careful than I will be in mid-game when our economy is a little bit better off. For obvious reasons. And you should be dead in a couple more hits. I wish we had more Doom Sights, but uh, we're gonna have to wait until we unlock Scourges for that. Enemy star and you should be dead as soon as this uh, Transmetal Thunderbolt hits you. Yeah. Oh, are you... Okay, there we go. Thought it was gonna survive with a couple of HP, but it doesn't look like it. Alright, let's see how much renown we're gonna get for this one. Yeah, I'm on now. Any day now. 
Uh, there we go. Let's see. We are... Ooh, oh, oh, 1,700. Very nice. A breakthrough, and that's another level up, and an action point awarded so we can move somewhere. Although it'll probably be inconsequential as to where. And this unlocks Grand Cruisers. Perfect. Okay, what else does it do? Capacity goes up a little bit. Command capacity, which we don't care about. Upgrade points is going to be useful, though, and even more leadership. Alrighty. Well, we're going to be facing bigger and bigger fleets while we don't really have bigger fleets uh, to boast of ourselves yet. Uh, additional turrets would be good here. Hmm. And we do want Canoptex stabilizers relatively often, but I did say last episode that I wanted the unstable pulse cores so we could use the uh, star pulse generators more offensively as opposed to solely defensively. Uh, let's see, what do you do? Oh, right, you uh, pull ships. This just obliterates the Eldari, pulling them closer. However, uh, we don't really want this yet. Animator coils is a very good upgrade, especially as we uh, sally into uh, mid to close range combat. So I guess we'll go for that next. We also will have to remember what we want to get next. Definitely Entropic Renewal as soon as possible. We need a world for that. We already have Aeonic Armor available. Hmm. So I guess we want to move through this line just to get Aeonic Armor, because uh, this will definitely apply to all of our, uh, all of our Titans. Critical saw chance is increased by 25% as long as the deck has not been destroyed. Uh, and motive baffles, inertialist drive maneuver reduced. Okay. That one's probably... Oh, hello, Amarkin. You finally get your improved inertialist drive. We really need that extra movement point because it is taking such a long time to uh, move. Otherwise, the rest of this is really not anything we really care about. Uh... Every allied fleet in the system has its ship upkeep reduced by 25%. Ironically, this isn't too bad uh, right now, but whatever. Uh, improved inertial is drive, please. I wish that it was a harder choice. Uh, now, hmm, we, we do have an extra point, and it might be beneficial to try and take tail off uh, just because we can. I mean, we have to save up enough money to be able to get a couple more ships in here, just to, I mean, now that the uh, fleet capacity is up at 1500, these guys are gonna, you know, they're gonna come in swinging. Uh, what can we get with the Grand Cruisers here? Is there a nice Grand Cruiser we could build? We could build a Scourge for carrier capa or uh, capability, or we could build an Apophis for massive speed and uh, a bunch of Lightning Arc turrets and, hmm... What would be the better option here? Plus you have the exceptional... I really love a fleet with this, but I think with residual absorption... Oh, although Inertialist Maneuver... Hmm... It might work on an Apophis, but obviously a fleet of Apophises would only... This would only apply to the, uh, the flagship. So probably wouldn't be useful, unless we had another ship that was similar. One of the battleships that could lead the Apophises. But I don't think anything really is that uh, is that similar to that sort of stuff. Hmm. So I think the Apophis is out. I guess we build a Scourge here. I mean, we could also build a bunch of Reapers. It'll probably actually be safer to build a bunch of Reapers or, or maybe Ruiners to... Uh, uh, to get the uh, better long-range capabilities in. The Reapers are cheaper. The Reaper be cheaper. Hmm. But then if we build Reapers, we're basically locked into having to get... Wait, don't you have a bunch of Reapers? Yeah, you have two already. And I guess, you know what, just build a third one. Since you already have them in this fleet, uh, build one more Reaper. And then we'll have a choice of... Uh, I really wish we could have built it out of uh, Nephora instead of... Uh, if only it had four instead of three, that would have been really swell. All right, let's do that. And then we have 300 money remaining. We're going to use that on one more upgrade before we uh, get that battle and tail off going. What will give us money? Money, money, Kandora, unfinished pylons, it reduces chaos threat, which would be swell in terms of not getting invasions, but, you know. Uh, Canoptic Foundries gives armor value to flagships, plus 10 resources, Ancient Vantage plus 10 resources. I guess we go with Ancient Vantages. I mean, I don't see a, a better option. Let's do that. It's only plus 10, but it's not a big deal. And we don't have a better option either way. 
Will we be outnumbered here a little bit, but we fought off these the uh, Eldari just fine. I think we'll be okay. We'll probably take some damage, might even lose a ship or so. But it'll be fine. Let's do it. Especially since they don't have any defensive stuff. Let's see, Thousand Sons and Emperor's Children, it's another assassination option. Oh, we do bring everybody and they'll, uh, they'll have 300 uh, leadership over us. And we're still hurt. But that's alright. <laughs> we're used to it now. Launch battle, let's get to it. At least this is causing us to level up our renown really fast, which means more upgrades. Uh, although I suppose the extra fleet capacity isn't actually all that good right now. But once again, as I said, we'll take some administrative like 10 turns or so once we've conquered both of these sectors uh, just to build them up. Or uh, I should say properly awaken them. And let's see, you guys. Yeah, we're going to keep the Shroud back. If there is a battle plan to steal, we will use you to steal it. Uh, you are already damaged, and I guess you're going to go on this side this time. Because it looks like that's the other side was better. Lastly, alright. Move you in. And wait, you know what? Send the Cartouche out so that they all send their fighters at it. And then just send it back afterwards. You guys like so. And then switch to reload, please. You like so. And then you like... So, there we go. And then all of you. Let's see. Oh, they didn't launch their fighters. Despite being able to see. What is a bigger ship? You know what? These ships are all on the edge. So I feel like maybe if we attack one of the uh, ships on the edge, they uh, they will be more likely to die because they won't get shot down. I really would like a couple Scourges to support this fleet, though. Should also get that uh, single transmensional thunderbolt going. Really would have been nice if we still had both of them, but uh, you know, if you gotta defend, you gotta defend. Shroud, I guess you sit back here and you switch to reload as well. You two switch to reload as well. And there we go. Let's speed it up to max. And let's see what ship we ended up sending this at. Don't be an escort, don't be an escort. Nope, it is a wow. That looks like a lot of ships. Uh, this is going to be concerning. Will you die? Or well, no, it looks like that's not going to be nearly enough ordnance. Wow, it's only going to do about 600-ish damage. And uh, <laughs> but the transdimensional thunderbolt is doing well. Oh, the AI is doing the weird conga line behavior. It's doing this. I don't know why sometimes the AI does this. Like, what, what's going on over here? Whatever. Most of the time it doesn't, but then sometimes it's just like, yeah, I've decided that uh, I'm going to uh, approach approach you in the least possible uh, advantageous manner. Alrighty, and they are now approaching. Let's do another one through these ships. I mean, if they're going to do this, I'm going to take advantage of it, I guess. we got to send our, uh, our transmissional Thunderbolts through something, after all. I mean, honestly, it wouldn't have been that different from sending them through through this blob. Oh, looks like they're going to target uh, the Harvester again. They really don't like this Harvester, but they might be just purposely attacking the uh, weaker ships here. Alright, any more? Oh, they'll also disable our Transdimensional Thunderbolt. Alright, well, if they do, they do. We don't want to lose the Admiral. Weapon's gonna get destroyed. Damn, we might need to go forward in a second. I want to launch one more Thunderbolt, or do we just send you guys forward? You know what? I think we just go forward. Screw it. Quit. You two, go. One. And two. There's the lightning strike. You, immediate and gramic regeneration, and then everybody follow. Hello. Time for damage. Let's get that uh, spread damage going. You guys move away from each other so you don't smack into each other in terms of your uh, shield. Uh, cartouches, I don't really give a damn what happens to you. Uh, you guys can stop. You don't actually need to move right now. Oh, damn, and your deck got uh, damaged yet again because, of course, it did. Uh, you could cause some rout, maybe? Yeah, there's one mutiny. Oh, he got immediately rallied. But I guess since, since he rallied, he can't really do anything else. You stay out front. Take all of the, uh, take all the damage for us. You are very badly beat up now. We need to switch you. We need to switch you out. I really don't want the Admiral to die. Because we've had this Admiral for a while now. Alright. Amarkin is doing good. You sit back. Oh, you're going to... Uh, you're going to switch to Reactive Hull, but I fear you're just about to route. Uh, let's get that... Uh, hmm. Can we rally? Uh, we just used uh, Pyramidal uh, Reconstruction. Oh, wait. There's no way to rally Necron ships, is there? 
It doesn't really matter. All right, you move forward. Uh, let's use an offensive Star Pulse Wave since it does more damage now. There we go. Very, very nice. You're going to cause a route as well, or a mutiny, rather. Uh, you guys can switch directions. I guess you can go for this one ship right here. Good job, Shroud. And they don't appear to... Okay, you're about to die. That's fine. We were using you as a sort of sacrificial ship anyway. You're going to move forward just in case they have any borders. There we go. And then a Markin is going to follow. No, 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 no. No escaping, please. And then you go back forward, Harvester. You need to be real, real careful. A Markin, try to ram people. Go into a Scarab Swarm. And... I guess we need to send you back. The problem is you're not prepared enough. We need to repair your engines. Three seconds. Okay, we're gonna send you back in three, two, one. Oh, your fleet and your engines got uh, critted out again. Ah, oh, man. Cruisers are just getting so wrecked by that uh, by that crit spam from those lances. Mark, can you want to board somebody? Ah, uh, let's get another offensive. There we go. There we go. You. You're gonna live or you're gonna die. I don't know. Use some defensive fighters, I guess. And get another swarm going. How's this ship looking? Well, since it's fleeing, they appear to be ignoring it. Uh, you can help out. Your engines are crippled as well. You know what? Switch to reload. Switch to reload. A Markin, you can switch to reload as well. I'll ram this ship while you're at it. That looks really cool. <laughs> there we go. And uh, one more ship over here. Let's see if you can't get a ram out there as well. And wait, did it just blow up as well? Yes, it did. All right, coming back this way then. Oh, why, hello. Offensive, uh, offensive star pulse wave. Let's get a boarding action going. Let's repair everybody. And you should be just about dead. Oh, disengaging. As if. Man, we've been sighting so many inferior vessels. I love the way that the Necrons board by uh, uh, using their Necron portals instead of... Uh, uh, you know, obviously launching a boarding, uh, boarding pods over. It just looks like such a nice effect. And there we go. Uh, so much for Taylor. And now we just have the Eldari place remaining. The only thing there is we can't unlock it without using battle plans, which we no longer have. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to deal with it as it is when we, uh, when we can actually get some battle plans. If we get the upgrades that I've been talking about, we will be able to... Ooh, what does this do? Chaos Threat Level Reduction, okay. Chaos Threat Level... Whoa, will it be below zero? I mean, will it be zero or... No, nope, there's a standard one, I guess, because probably one of the worlds causes an extra chaos... Uh, uh, corruption, but... Uh, or threat, whatever. Yeah, so we'll need to wait for the battle plans. I guess we'll wait here in Jubal just to... Uh, prevent the Drukari raids, and we'll hit this place as soon as we're able. They only have two threats, so hopefully they don't get too upgraded. And we looking like we just got a U, Void Worlds attack, but that'll be next turn, so let's end the turn. Take control of the Skeletal system in the Skeletal sector, yeah. Okay, so the plan is, defend against the Eldari here, spend a few turns, I guess we'll allow the Urgency Gauge to go up by one. Uh, we'll take Skeletal first, just because there are only four worlds here. Or four, uh, Four systems here, rather. Probably more than four worlds. Now, ironically, each one of these uh, systems only has one world that we're looking at, although obviously I expect that there's probably others to some degree, or at least asteroids or some something going on over there. Um, but there's the end turn, and let's keep going. I want to start uh, using these uh, Grand Cruisers, which is another reason why I really want to get the economy up. Uh, if we don't, if we waste time just doing, winning everything with uh, cruisers and battle cruisers, at least the ones we have, it'll just take too long to uh, be able to afford Titans and Grand Cruisers in terms of upkeep, which is, uh, yeah, as I said, very necessary. Because I want to try everything out as fast as possible. So I guess that'll be a thing for next episode where we'll have some of these uh, admin turns. Alrighty, let's see what we're looking at here. Uh, you two are going to go to Jubal, as promised. Wait, one, two, three. Nah, you won't be able to get there in time anyway. Do that. And I would love to upgrade a bunch of these worlds. Wait, can optic foundries? What do you do again? Oh, armor value, right, right, right. And an ancient vantage. Lovely and upgradable as you are. We need this to be able to defend itself. And we clearly don't have enough there. There we go. We got us. We got the sets. Do we waste 400 on defense platforms and hide behind the platforms? 
Or do we get another set for more long range? I feel like we get another set. It seems right to me. And I'm almost tempted to say put the set as the... Uh, as the Admiral, and just keep this Admiral back instead of, uh, and then just send the Harvester over to the other fleet. Seems like a decent idea. Neither the Scourge nor the Apophis are long range. I mean, I guess in theory we could make the Scourge the, uh, the Admiral here. Oh, wow, the sets are actually, wait, sets are worth more than Scourges? Interesting. Huh. Oh, man, we're gonna be able to spam so many Scourges in a single fleet, and I'll probably have a couple of fleets where we have Scourges just acting as support so that they have some ordnance. Uh, I'm actually now curious, does any Necron ship have more than 9,000 identification range? Huh, not a single one. They're all 9,000 exactly. Oh, no, wait, Shr oh, Shroud does, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, let's get that uh, set in here. And ready, set, go, Overlord Spear. You are going to be the uh, flagship because you are the first that I uh, selected. And then Harvester, I guess we're going to ship transfer you over to here. And then we'll make you uh, the capital ship instead, or the uh, flagship instead of that cartouche. Even though, once again, I don't really give a damn about this Admiral. It's just that uh, I'd prefer him to stay alive for now. We'll replace him with something better eventually. There we go. Oh, and before I forget, I just want to get one upgrade in here. We have an Ancient Vantage somewhere. We might as well upgrade it right here. Yeah. And just so we start heading up to the uh, next upgrade level. And I just want to see, did we get any new Admirals? Two, two, and one. No, not yet. Two, two, one, one. Okay. So in two turns, we'll have four new Admirals to choose from. And we will most likely get a couple new ones, uh, hoping that uh, there are better ones. Because we got to get these damn fleets up. All right, let's end the turn. Once again, I would have made this game a lot easier for or this uh, campaign a lot easier uh, just by uh, staying in the Sentinel Worlds and building that up completely to maxed out before heading out to Chinchar. But hey, it's all good. It's been really, really fun for you uh, starting episodes. Uh, let's end the turn. Yes. Here come the Eldari. Alrighty, and they do outnumber us, but we are able to max out our leadership, which is perfect. No, 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 no. Sekhems, I love you, don't get me wrong, but I want sets in here. Uh, take out a Reaper, put in a set, and then we can get a Shroud. We already have a Shroud. I mean, we could get a Sacrificial. You know what, let's get a Sacrificial Sekhem in here. It'll die, we'll send it forward, it uses Star Pulse Wave to do damage, and it'll explode and get uh, lightning struck, but uh, I think that'll be quite, quite effective. Alrighty. I think this is the most uh, cruisers slash battle cruisers that we've ever brought so far, and it's uh, a double Ulthway. Okay, it looks like uh, uh, it looks like Ulthway is pissed off at us for some bizarre reason. I have no idea why. All right, moving on. Maybe Eldred's a little bit, uh, maybe Eldred's the one that's upset. All right, let's start over here. Uh, we will keep the Reapers in front, I think. Uh, so that's you, you, and no, you're a set. You are a Harvester. Okay, so let's keep the two Reapers plus the Harvester in front, a Harvester in the center, like so. Uh, Reapers, you have non-broadsides, but the Harvesters also have non-broadsides. Okay, perfect. Uh, reload on you. Sets, you're gonna be group two. Oh, I didn't make you guys group one, my bad. Uh, you're gonna be group two, and you are also going to do the exact same thing. And I guess you guys are gonna be group three. You have the uh, lightning arcs. But uh, maybe you guys don't even need to be a group, or maybe you can be group three, and then you can be four, because you're gonna be sacrificial. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. We are gonna have to be careful here. We don't have the Karen Annihilator to rely upon in terms of doing like insane amounts of damage, so. It'll be all you guys go. And you guys obviously are going to switch to reload. Probably not going to get too much use out of our Lightning Link this uh, particular battle. Let's send you up here. And let's send you... Right there. Alrighty. And let's see, I guess we want to send in the Canoptech Probe. I was about to say maybe we should send in our uh, our fighters, which we do have a decent amount of this time. Hmm. But then again... 
We don't want to waste them all on a bunch of uh, little ships, so I guess we'll wait. We'll wait until the Canoptech probe hits something. You know what? Let's uh, let's speed it up while we're at it. And hello, hello. What do we have here? Aha! We have an assassination target. Well then. Oh, giant asteroids. Of course it is. Well, let's have you destroy the uh, the assassination target then, because uh, the uh, Canoptech probe's attached to it anyway. And let's go those transdimensional thunderbolts. I'm gonna slow it back down. Oh damn it! My mouse double clicked. Ah, oh. what the hell, mouse? I remember I was dealing with this like six months ago, and uh, again, gotta be kidding me. Either that or something's wrong with my finger. Uh, let's see, let's go for focus engine on you, and we just gotta, I'm gonna keep an eye on this just in case uh, the asteroids, can you actually see the asteroid like circles appear when you are not zoomed in? Or when you have uh, the UI hidden rather? Can't actually see any. Yeah, there's one, but I want to see if one if one is near us. All right. Oh, I forgot to set you guys to reload. My bad. Considering you're the uh, you're the firepower of this fleet. Oh, you are the assassination target. You didn't get destroyed. Oh, they are launching. Uh, they're launching their own ordnance. Okay. Alrighty. Well, a defensive battle it may be, but we're gonna do. Oh damn, we just got identified. There's the completed mission. You are going to go into engramic regeneration right after you do this. There we go, and go into regeneration. Awaken those warriors. We can transfer troops over to the Sekhem, especially since we're going to use it as a uh, as a sacrifice. Oh, uh, at least we'll transfer troops over once you're below 5, or below 15, rather. And what are you doing? Ariel's Blade. Okay, there we go. Transfer troops is going to be ready in a second. Are you? Oh, you know what we can do? Let's get some... Uh, let's do that. There we go. You're now dead. The AI doesn't seem to, like, I, I never like the fact that the AI automatically goes into a uh, call to arms, because it's not actually a good thing on, on, like, the Eldar, for example. It slows you down, and they can't do anything, and as soon as it goes into call to arms, a ship is dead. It's a waste. But, uh, you know, the, you can't expect too much from the AI. And, let's see, we're not gonna sally out, at least not yet. Probably will later. Let's just keep you tanking there, Reaper. This is exactly what you're here for. You're here to make sure that the uh, that the sets don't take a lot of damage. And are those fighters following us? <laughs> Let's touch some more, I guess. And you know what? We do need to switch you to reactive hull. Okay, I guess we're going to turn off Re uh, Awakening Warriors, and let's go double Pyramidal Reconstruction. You have it on cooldown, but you do not. There we go. That'll recover some of your troops as well. More giant asteroids coming in. Let's get that Canoptech probe uh, going. Poor Eldari. We, we may not have a... Actually, our fleet's actually doing quite a bit better than it was before with uh, now that we have the addition of our... Uh... Oh, wow. Did you just get hit by Torps or was that a ram? Damn. Uh, well, you're done. Let's move you back here. Looks like it's somebody else's turn to tank. Uh, we can't actually... You know what? Retreat. You're very close to the edge of the map, and... Damn it! I hit that a couple seconds too late because I was worried about retreating you. Well, then you're going to switch to reactive hull next. Uh, but you're still okay, and the sets shouldn't be tanking. Wait, what? Okay, there we go. Sekem, Sekem, and Shroud. Alright, Shroud, go here. Sekems, get ready to go. You're all going to switch to dispersion, and we're going to send you all forward. Oh, we got more torps coming in. Oh, they torped themselves, though. Ooh, offensive, uh, offensive star pulse wave. And you know what? Everybody switch to dispersion. Get ready to go. And seconds right here. Down again. Offensive strike. And everybody else. Oh, oh. Nice set of torps into their own ship. Lovely. Oh, hi, hello, Eldari. Where are you going? And why are you going there? And come back. But actually don't. Just die instead. Alrighty, let's move forward. We just have to be careful with our Admiral here, who is where? Uh, where our Admirals, I suppose. Wait, did one of our Admirals die? We had three here, right? Uh, wait, I might have just instantly lost an Admiral without noticing. Whoops. It wasn't the set Admiral. No, it wasn't. Okay, that's fine. Oh wait, was the f the ship that was uh, that we uh, had escaped? Was that an admiral? I was not paying attention to that uh, 
its status there. And let's do this. You guys... Oh, we don't have any more Star Pulse Waves. Actually, we do have a couple. Destroy those fighters. There we go. You guys keep going. We just have to be very, very wary of enemy... Uh, I've had him Torps, as we've already seen. And then I guess you can all switch to Reload now. And, ooh, hello. Oh, there's a nice little uh, spread of Torps. You guys can stop so you don't run into it. There we go. You just gotta pay attention. <laughs> or you gotta be looking. Here we go. Another Shroud coming in. Oh, let's get you guys moving forward. And hello. Another one of these uh, Transdimensional Thunderbolts. Uh, I really want to use the Lightning Link, but... There's really no good opportunity. Uh, can somebody Star Pulse Wave here? Yes. Thank you, thank you. And we really gotta steal that, uh, those battle plans. Except to you, somebody steal them. There we go. And can you move forward? Yes, you can. Move right here. Perfect, perfect. Everybody wreck face, please. Do we have any more? Ooh, wait. Lightning Link. Yes, yes, finally. Haven't been able to do too much of that, and I guess what we want to also do is a Pyramidal Reconstruction, and then another Pyramidal Reconstruction, just to make sure that any weapons lost. Oh, I should have probably stopped these guys moving. Oh, let's just destroy you with a nice, uh, nice Transmetral Thunderbolt, and then uh, just a couple ships left, so let's make sure that you guys go right here. Destroy this ship. Board it, please. And it's gonna mutiny, and then surround and kill this last ship. Everybody, Star Pulse Wave. There we go, and and one more time through here, and everybody stop, stop, don't get hit by your own Star Pulse Waves, please, or your own uh, Transmetral Thunderbolts, rather. Boarding action, completely necessary. I feel like the Necrons are probably the only faction where it makes the most sense uh, that they uh, that they can board right before a ship explodes, because they can just uh, get out via Warp Portal uh, right after Although I suppose you have you have the teleportarium aboard uh, reg about aboard uh, imperial ships and uh, other factions like the orcs can also do similar things, but I feel like they're not as effective and uh, doing that often. Oh, you did die. That was the harvester. I don't remember what you actually had. Oh, you're the garbage admiral with the garbage uh, abilities that I really didn't care about. Okay, I'm glad you were the one that died. I guess you got hit by torps. I gotta go back over and see uh, what exactly happened to you. But that was good. Uh, obviously, we weren't defending this with our best foot forward. But the sets did well and provided that uh, long-range firepower we sorely needed. Everybody else was there essentially to attack. Ooh, Imperials! Look at this! Uh, that's absolutely adorable. And we can skip through the rest of this, of course. Oh, I really wish that the Dolmen Gate wouldn't go to Dorsia, but then I guess it uh, it sort of makes sense in the sense that it goes to where it's needed and not to the thing that... Uh, or where it was originally constructed, you know what I mean. Uh, I was just saying the warp lane would normally go to Vermard, but uh, obviously the Dolmen Gate doesn't care about the warp lanes or anything like that. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. We have an invasion. Oh, a pretty big invasion here. Oh, we gotta try to get here by that time. Damn. I mean, I guess in theory we could... You know what? I think we're going to go to Skellis next turn. We do have four battle plans, so in theory we could hit up a Sola Bay right now uh, with the Marken, although uh, this is like 2.5k against less than fifth like less than 1200 or something oh man yeah we're gonna have to build some more ships here oh another mi the minor buried shipyard all right well anyway unfortunately we are out of time so i am going to have to call this episode here i think we'll build oh we'll build something next episode at least uh, get a couple more ships in this fleet uh, i might build you wait what does the apophis have in terms of weaponry oh, it has the arc turret so the uh yeah, it has a lightning arc turret, it's not the arc propagator. The name is really, the name has always confused me, but yeah, you have, you don't have particle whips, which means we can't build you in this fleet. Uh, we could build scourges, in, no, we can't build scourges in this fleet. Damn, we can't really build grand cruisers in this fleet at all. Might have to wait for, uh, might have to wait one of the, for one of the big boys, but we should be there pretty darn soon. I mean, we're at eight, and uh, we're getting like a quarter of a level per battle that we're outnumbered at. So I guess we'll wait on that, but we'll still get a couple of ships here. I think maybe temporarily what we'll do is we'll get a couple of Apophises, or not Apophises, a couple of Scourges, rather, into a Markin's fleet to support with, uh, uh, to support us with those nice launch bays, and then we'll immediately send both of these fleets out to Skellis to try to capitalize on this. 
And then what we'll do is we'll send a couple of fleets out from the Sentinel Worlds. One will go to Jubal to uh, stay here. The other two will go to Tailoth to defend against this fairly weak invasion. And as we saw, I think the uh, the sets should be able to take care of that. Otherwise, we'll wait until we can uh, destroy the Eldari. We might even set the send the sets or set the sets up in a Sola Bay to destroy these guys so that a Markin doesn't have to worry about. It. And I know what I said about uh, ignoring the other uh, locations for a while, uh, just for the purpose of. Uh, uh, for the purpose of building up our economy, but we can sort of do that while we take Skellis over. The thing is, Skellis is such a tiny sector, I don't really care about it as much. It is, however, going to cause probably more invasions, but uh, that's fine. Whatever. And wait, did we get our... Okay, you guys get replaced in two turns. What do we get here? Nightmare Shroud and Transmetal Thunderbolt, you're very recruitable. Ooh, Residual Absorption and Transmetal Thunderbolt, you're very recruitable as well. All right. So we now do have Admirals that we will want to get in here. And I think what we can do is we can get some newer Admirals that are good in places like Jubal. And then later into uh, uh, into Skellis itself to prevent uh, the uh, Sons of Malice from attacking us. And then we can wait to give them proper fleets. Since we have the extra fleets, we might as well have uh, recruit all the good admirals we have as we go. And then use them as stationary fleets until we can afford, in terms of our economy, to give them, uh, to give them more ships. But yeah, that'll all be a problem for next time, especially fixing up the economy, which is definitely going to have to be a uh, priority. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, stay tuned for that one. So with that said, as always, I do appreciate any and all feedback with regards to the gameplay or the way I do things on this channel. If you have a second, please do take it to leave a like and a comment to support the channel. It really does help. As always, all glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.